Darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. This is the first book in the Mercy Thompson series, and this is urban fantasy focusing on werewolves. There are also vampires and fae in here, but mostly it follows werewolves and Mercy, who is a shapeshifter who can turn into a coyote. So I listened to the audiobook for this, which is narrated by Lorelai King, and I picked up this book because it's got a Native American main character in Mercy Thompson. And that's one of the things I was trying to work on this year. And also it's fantasy, which I would read anyway, so it seemed like a good fit. So the main character in this series, Mercy Thompson, is a car mechanic. And she's pretty self-sufficient and pretty kick-ass. And I love her terribly. Definitely my favorite part of the series is Mercy. So Mercy is a shapeshifter. She can turn into a coyote. And her mom, well, Mercy is half white, half Native American, and... Mercy's mom was not prepared to have a daughter who suddenly turns into a coyote sometimes. Like, she describes her mom walking into her room when she was little and all of a sudden there's a coyote cub in the crib instead of her daughter and it freaked her out. So Mercy was sent to live with a pack of werewolves, like, part of her father's family. So Mercy grew up around a werewolf pack and so she is used to being around werewolves and werewolf politics, which is a huge part of this book, is the werewolf packs although Mercy doesn't technically belong to one. So the story starts off with Mercy working in her car shop, and this teenage boy comes in looking for work. And so Mercy can immediately tell that this boy is a werewolf just by smelling him, and so she decides to help him. She can tell that he's in trouble, so she first tries to respect his, his wishes of not getting the alpha of the local pack involved, but when things start happening and this boy brings more trouble... Uh, into the picture, she has to call in the alpha, Adam, who is also her next door neighbor. So most of this plot revolves around the werewolf packs and their internal dynamics and relationships and how they operate, which I thought was kind of cool. Most of the plot of the story revolves around a kidnapping and Mercy trying to get the person that was kidnapped back. And there's kind of this question of who actually is responsible for the kidnapping, and so Mercy doesn't know who she can trust, and it gets interesting with the politics of the werewolf uh, pack, as they're not sure who in the pack is actually trustworthy or not, because it looks like there might be a mole. That's probably all I can tell you about this without spoiling the plot too much. The actual mystery of what was happening and who was responsible and everything had enough twists and turns in it to keep me interested, but it doesn't necessarily stick very strongly to that plot. Like, there are tons and tons of small plot lines happening and introducing characters. You can definitely tell that Patricia Briggs knew that this was going to be a series and she's trying to set up characters that we're going to see later. At least I'm hoping so, because I haven't read the rest of it yet. So the world that they live in is a lot like our own. Like, it's an urban fantasy. It's pretty much our world. Except that the fae in this book, um, magical creatures like fairies and leprechauns and gremlins and sprites have come out in the open. Technology was making it really hard for them to hide. So about 20 years ago, they announced that they actually did exist. And some of the more benevolent and not dangerous fae have come out into the open. And one of those fae is uh, Mercy's old boss and the guy that she bought the mechanic shop from, Z. And he is a gremlin. So he is this magical being that has an affinity for working with metals. And so he uses that to work on cars, which is pretty cool. And I love Z's personality. He's a bit, I don't want to say cantankerous. Um, but you can tell that Z has been alive for a while, and so his view of what is important versus everybody else's, like, everyday drama, like, I, I love Z. Um, he has also got a pretty big heart. There are also vampires in the story. Specifically, we meet Stefano. I think it's Stefano. Um, but there's this one vampire that Mercy is working on the van for, and he owns this VW bus, but he's obsessed with Scooby-Doo, so the bus is painted to look like the mystery machine, which I love. And he's an atypical vampire. So like the rest of them are these blood-sucking nightmares who, you know, are interested in their own politics and hierarchy and having the finer things. 
And then this vampire is obsessed with pop culture and Scooby-Doo, and I love him terribly. I wish, I hope he shows up more in the rest of the series because I adored him. And then we have the werewolves. So Adam is Mercy's next door neighbor. He's also the alpha. He's this interesting character where you can tell he's kind of got a soft spot, but at the same time, he's the alpha and he has to be strong and uh, masculine and, you know, in charge of everything. He also has a daughter, Jessie, who is not a werewolf. She's just a normal teenage girl and she's pretty awesome too. Like to have this normal, like she, she knows her dad's a werewolf and she's to werewolf politics, but like. She's also just this typical teenager, and it's great. Within Adam's pack, there is this guy, Warren, who is gay, and his boyfriend, Kyle, who is not a werewolf. And Kyle doesn't know that Warren's a werewolf, so that's an interesting plot point. But it also is kind of like this one of those tangential plots that's happening in this book, where it doesn't really play a whole part into like the actual plotline of the story, but it kind of just adds flavor to the entire world. And then we have the pack that Mercy grew up with, and... The rest of the story takes place in Washington State, in the Tri-City area, and I don't remember where Mercy grew up, but it's like a different, more isolated pack out in the country. Um, and within this track pack, we have basically her father figure, Bran, who was like the big kahuna of all the werewolves. And then she's got Sam, who is Bran's son, and she and Sam have this shared history and past and love story and so there is this love triangle happening between adam and sam fighting for mercy's attention like they both are like she's mine and claim her the problem with both these guys though in werewolf politics is that they just kind of fighting with this girl as their mate and mercy's supposed to go with it but she's like hey i am not either of yours I get a say in who I'm dating and involved with, and it's not you guys, and I don't appreciate that. But at the same time, you can tell that she has a pull to both of them separately for different reasons. So it would be, it'll be interesting for the rest of the series to see who she ends up with, and if she ends up dating both of them for a period of time. So this book on its own is a three star read. It definitely is setting up a lot for the rest of the series, and I am definitely going to keep reading, and I hope that a lot of these dangling plot threads get picked up on the further books, which is what I'm kind of expecting when it's set up. But if you want to read this just by itself, it's a little bit disappointing because there's nothing... I mean, there is a resolution to the kidnapping plot, but there's not a resolution to everything in this story. A lot of the stuff just gets mentioned and then it doesn't actually like get finished, which I guess... which I can see being a little bit disappointing. The writing on this is pretty much just a meh writing, that's why it's three stars. There's nothing in here where I'm like, hey, that's incredibly quotable and I love it. As for the Native American angle to this, which is why I read in the first place, the Fae in the story, as soon as they come out, there are basically Fae reservations set up. So like we have Indian reservations in the real world. In this world, the Fae are allowed to go live on these reservations, these plots of land that are just for Fae and do their own thing because some people are freaked out by the Fae and their power and they're not sure what to do with them. They're not sure if they can trust them. So this world is definitely not 100% accepting of the Fae. Like, they're there, but most people would rather not have to deal with them in their lives. And there's also talk within the werewolf and vampire communities about whether or not they should also come out and whether or not they're going to have to because technology is advancing and also it's kind of like they're a secret. But, like, so many people know that there are werewolves that it's hard. Like, eventually it's going to come out. And the question is, do we control the story now while we have a chance? Or do we let it leak from somebody else and have them tell these horrible, monstrous tales about us? Can we spin it to our advantage? So there's enough in this story that I was interested in it. I'm involved in it. I love Mercy. I'm ready for book two. Totally going to keep reading. Um, there is also a companion series to this. So this is the Mercy Thompson books. There's also a parallel series called Alpha and Omega, also by Patricia Briggs, and maybe I'll read those two. It depends how the Mercy Thompson books go. So if you've read this book or the rest of the series or the Alpha and Omega books, let me know in the comments below what you thought of them. Should I read all of them or does it start getting worse later on? Hopefully her writing starts getting better. So there's my review for Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. Check it out if you want to. If you like urban fantasy, if you like werewolves, 
I am actually not a huge werewolf person. I'm definitely more of a vampire type girl. So as far as urban fantasy goes, I kind of avoid werewolves. So this will be interesting. So peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.